never know the time of day. My heart's a flame. It's not the same. Blame it all on love. I wonder if you're true. What would I do if you ever let me down? Oh, can't you see? This can't be. son proposes to bring into this family? Why, it's preposterous. Of course. But this must be handled with velvet gloves, not the iron hand. Listen to More, more, Uncle. No more. What a ovation. And to think that this is the end, that you're going to waste that voice on a husband. But what a husband. Bring me something for these flowers, Della. What a future. And all behind you. National radio hookups. Then Hollywood. Always there's time to love, but not to sing. It's no use, Mo. Tonight was my farewell appearance. So what? Farewell appearances go on for years. Bernhardt made a career of them. Here, no, none of that. This is the time to be gay. America needs you. Look, the Terry Arden Club of Kokomo. And even Governor Dickerson loves you. And look, from the American Legion. Is it you're throwing down the American Legion? It ain't patriotic. Our flag. Come in. Hello, Pop. Oh, you already got a bouquet. Why, what's this? It's from the boys backstage. Bless your hearts. This is the nicest compliment of all. Oh, it's not. We got them wholesale. It's just to say we hope you're going to be awfully happy. Oh, you're a dear. Pop, you think I'm right in, in leaving all this? Leaving this? For love, I would like that. Mr. Jefferson Bartlett Wadsworth. Mr. Even on his cards. Shows you what he thinks of himself. 
But you don't know him. Missed the stuffed shirt in spades. Papa makes him a vice president. Papa gives him a big office with gold lettering on his door. Not anymore. Jeff's leaving all that. He's going to make his own future. Ah, that kind of a dope? So you're going to give up everything to start to death with a schlemiel? May I come in? Darling! Mo, this is Jeff. Hello. How'd you do? Gentlemen, you can fight it out. I'm going to leave my future in your hands. It ain't you I'm saying is wrong. And it ain't her. It's you and her together. Can you imagine that portion of the up to our elbows in dishwater? So that's love. There should be a vaccination. Phooey! Jeff, maybe we're wrong. Maybe other people are right. Darling, other people can't lay out our lives for us like a road map. We've got to make our own lives. What do your father and mother think? And they're all mixed up, of course. You see, all my life, father's been waiting for me to take my place in the firm. Perhaps he's right. Maybe that's what you should do. I've tried it. Yes, Mr. Wadsworth. Sign here, Mr. Wadsworth. Day after day of being told what to do by people who laugh at me behind my back. Do you know what you want? Sure I know. I've had a taste of it. In a little aircraft development plant. You never heard of it. But out there, away from everything and everybody, they're building airplanes. A new kind of airplane. Airplane? Sure, and better airplanes. And because they haven't got much money, they, they build them mostly out of dreams and courage. And prayers. Yes, there would be prayers. They're my kind of people. For a couple of years now, I've been stealing time off and working with them. Working like dogs all night. Lots of nights. We get so excited, we forget to sleep. <laughs> Spinning new ideas, thin and flimsy as cobwebs. Tying them together and trying them out. And often watching them fall apart. And somebody gets hurt. But that's part of it. And finally, after her failures and thinking and sweating, comes something that's strong and real. It stands out there in the sky, roaring almost as loud as your heart. And you know you've made something. Somehow, that's a lot more important to me than wearing a lot of titles I didn't earn. Yes, I guess it is. But will your family understand? I mean, will they understand about us? They've got to understand. I'll make them understand. Of course we understand. But of course, these things take time. We must make a place for Terry in our world. And then, in a year or two, or three? Two years, three years. And in the meantime, you will be assuming your proper place in the firm. I'll give you all the destiny you can handle. But don't you see that... You're it... musical. I'll make a place for you on the board of governors of the opera. This is a serious world. Got to face facts. Forget romantic nonsense. Don't you do it. You'll give up your dreams and romantic nonsense and you'll have nothing left. Mother! Shut up. Sixty years ago, I was in love with a high-flying young scamp. Footloose as a flea on a hot stove. Mother, you're not well. Sit down and rest your dignity. That man had dreams, big dreams. Of course, he wasn't what you'd call a good provider then. But he loved me, and I loved him. And you married him? Yes, but I ruined him. Made him trade his dreams for dignity and cheap little money ideals. Then I found out it was the harem scarum dreamer I really loved. And still do. Now, for goodness sake, you two young ones, clear out of here and get married first place you can find. Oh, you're a darling. <laughs>
Jeff. Uh, <laughs> You're not superstitious, are you? Who, <laughs> me? No. Why? Dropping the bride? That's not good. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. It was all my fault. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. I'm just getting clumsy. Darling, you couldn't be clumsy. You're perfect. <laughs> Jeff, hmm? there were supposed to be eggs, but don't ask about the eggs. Just drink your orange juice. Darling, you're wonderful. All this with your own little hands. How do you do it? Stop it, silly. To you, my darling, and to us. It isn't good, is it? I'm sorry, Jeff, I did try. Honey, it isn't supposed to be good. A bride's first coffee's supposed to be funny, just like her first biscuits. Husbands never leave home until after the second bad breakfast. Don't say that. I just can't cook. You'll learn. Maybe we need a cook. Can't afford it. That sounds silly, but at the moment it's true. Well, anyway, the orange juice was good. Jeff, hmm? if you don't mind, we. Oh, well, we just can't starve to death. Listen, my sweet. Don't you worry about it. Of course you'll learn to cook. 50 million women cook every day. There's nothing to it. Goodbye. Of course I'll learn to cook. Fifty million women can't be wrong. Jeff, we can't live like this. You're quite right. It's those airplanes. Those precious airplanes of yours. They're killing you. The airplanes, yeah. Last night, the night before, almost every night, it's nothing but airplanes, airplanes, airplanes. I'm getting sick of it. Last night, if you remember, I wanted to take you out to the theater, but you were too tired. Yes, I was too tired. We mustn't be like this. We've got to have some time to live. Can't we get somebody... Terry! I'm sorry. There must be more to life than cooking in airplanes. My dear, it might interest you to know that today I'm going to swallow my pride and beg a quarter of a million dollars for those airplanes. You mean from your father? Yes, from the board of directors. You're going to talk to them? I'm going to show them something that'll knock their hats off. Look out! Clumsy. You want to burn your arm off?
such a little while ago, I, I couldn't be clumsy. I was perfect. Well, time marches on. Granny! Hmm. Wasted most an hour waiting for him to go. Just came in to see how you were getting on. Well, how are you getting on? We're fine. Everything's just fine. I don't believe you, and you look awful. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'm just a cook for a man in love with an aeroplane. And a bad cook at that. Stop whining. Of course you're a cook. But that doesn't mean you have to live like a servant or look like one. Let me look at you. Hmm. You go down and get your hair fixed. Your face, too. And a manicure. Tonight, put on your prettiest dress and take him out. Kick up your heels somewhere. Have some fun. Where is the young scamp today? Oh, he's out knocking hats off the board of directors. Huh. Big business needs some of that. Gentlemen, during the past few years, the airplane has revolutionized aerial transportation. But the greatest advancements are still ahead. Of course, it's difficult for ordinary men to appreciate real scientific progress. But I know that you gentlemen have the vision and the foresight to look beyond today's ordinary things and see the glorious conquest of tomorrow. Pardon me, Jeff. Perhaps you'd better be a little more specific. Of course. Gentlemen, this is your opportunity to cash in on the next big advance in aerial transportation. A completely radio-controlled airplane. <laughs> well, now, isn't that cute? <laughs> That's funny. All the time I thought you were talking about full-sized airplanes. Can you produce them in million lots for the Christmas tree? Well... I think we ought to make a survey. Gentlemen, gentlemen, don't you understand? Can't you see that? No, no, don't try to think. Just watch. make them with a million, two million, three million. How do you like it? Stop it, Jeff. Stop it, I tell you. Gentlemen, I apologize. I thought you had brains. But I was wrong. I hope that's all right. Nice to see you. Da, 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 da. Well, the songwriters had the right idea. Here, presents. What on earth? Open it. The son of Strongheart. Well, could be, I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's darling. What's his name? What's his name? His name is Leticia. <laughs> And here, one before every meal, the man says. <laughs> <laughs> they must expect quick results, eh? How's everything been, Mo? Terrific, but it could be worse. Here I've got a spot for a singer, coast-to-coast -coast radio program with television, but to everybody I bring, they say no. Ah, oh, you'll find someone. 
Always uh, remembering the soul of sweet swing. Don't be silly. Everybody's forgotten about me. Uh, there's the Terry Arden Club of Kokomo and the American Legion. But how goes it with you? Colossal, eh? <laughs> Husbands are funny. He spends all of his time trying to break his neck in some silly plane. They say it takes courage. But waiting home day after day, that takes courage, too. I know. I can see it in your eyes. I'm sorry. Oh, my cake. Excuse me, Mo. That's all right. I've got to be getting along anyway. I'll see you later. <clears throat> You're a lot of help. Hello, Mr. Wadsworth. idea? Our anniversary. Three months. I cheated a couple of days because I wanted to bake your cake, but something happened to it and now you can't eat it. Anyway, you can blow the candles out. What's the matter? Oh, things, just things. Jeff, don't you notice anything? Yeah. What's that funny smell? Part of it's the cake and part of it's the chicken. It was an awfully nice chicken, but something happened to it. Just like something happened to the cake. So busy reviewing all your past triumphs with that round-headed ape that you burned up the dinner. Well, at least you're consistent. Jeff, please. Dog biscuits. Did he bring those here? Yes, he did. And that is no. Sure, why not? Dog biscuits. In three months, you haven't cooked a dinner I'd feed to a dog. Oh, stop it. Don't say that. You don't understand. Sure, I understand. He wanted to put your name back up in lights, didn't he? Well, didn't he? Yes, that's exactly what he wanted to do, but I told him... Well, go him. ahead and let him. Why not? Well, home's no place for you. Thanks. That's all I needed to wake up. I've been keeping you from your public. Well, I'll get out of the way. There you are. Of course, it's a good program, but more with all that ballyhoo, they're not paying very much. I know, it's peanuts. But this ain't a commercial sponsored program. It's put on by the network as a public service feature. They ain't got real money for talent. But think of the prestige. I am. And I'm also thinking how I'm going to have to watch my pennies in order to pay the rent and eat. Every housewife does. Don't call me a housewife. In the fiddles a little, Benny. We're losing them. All right, boys. Move in a little closer, please. Well, look, look who's here. Hello, Hi, boys. Hi, boys. Hi, boys. Well, here we are again. Hi, Terry. It's good to see you. And you too, Benny. <laughs> oh, well, here today and here today, I always say. From <laughs> nightclubs to happy homemakers. Imagine me on the modern home hour from coast to coast. Ooh. A little green under the chin, violet up the eyes, heavy yellow on the cheeks. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> All that for television? Not me. I'm lucky. All they do is make up the back of my neck. <laughs> There's somebody I want you to meet. See you later. 
Terry, this is Virginia Francis, the creator of this program. How do you do? How do you do? We should make a great team. You know what the modern home should be, and I know what it should not be. <laughs> Tell me honestly, are people really interested in housekeeping anymore? You're joking, of course. No. I mean in this modern, streamlined age of hit-and-run living. Do people still think about a home, except as a place to change clothes before going somewhere? Well, times have changed. But life hasn't changed. The homemaker is still general manager, chief cook and bottle washer. And the sweetheart of her husband. That's a good trick, if she can do it. It's a big job. So big, she's got to use her head as well as her hands. The homemaker who allows herself to be just a slave is really shirking half her job. I can't agree with that. Oh, it's her responsibility to use the modern methods that enable her to do a better job of housekeeping and be the companion of her husband. All right, Miss Arden, uh, we want to get a balance for the orchestra. Oh. Come on, come on, let's have it quiet. This is no clam bake. All right, take it from the opening, Benny. I'm way up in the air. I'm here and there. I never know the time of day. My heart's a All right, kill it. Balance okay, but Benny, hold up your background, will you? Okay. Someday, television will sweep the country, just as radio did. We expect to be in on the ground floor. Mm. What of it? Mother, with this, you can see as well as hear. Why? You mean how? I mean why? Who cares? There's an experimental program on right now. I'll get it for you. I'm way up in the air. I'm here and there. I never know the time. Well, now you've got something. This makes sense. It's that girl again. Turn it off. Don't you touch it. Don't you dare touch it. I wonder if you're true. What would I do if you'd ever let me down? Oh, can't you see? This can't be blame it all on love. Good evening. This is the Modern Home Hour, addressed to the wives and mothers of America, the homemakers. Yours is the biggest and the most important job in the world. But how often have you wished for more hours in the day? More time to do the 101 things you like to do? Well, that is the purpose of this program, to give you more time in which to live and to enjoy life. Of course, we can't put any more hours into the day, but we can show you how to save many precious hours every day through the use of finer and more efficient methods of housekeeping. So, listen and learn how modern facilities can step up the tempo of homemaking just as Terry Arden, lovely Terry Arden, steps up the tempo of our orchestra with swing. I'm simply going mad, walking round in a day. You went right to my head, and now I'm all ablaze. Please tell me I'm the one, the only. Virginia Francis, nationally known home economist, who brings you the first in a series of demonstrations on modern homemaking. Good evening. During the past few years, we have seen more and more of the burdens of housekeeping taken over by that most capable of all servants, electricity. We speak of the home as the temple of life. And if that is so, surely the kitchen is its shrine. But let me ask frankly, how many of you housewives our kitchen slaves. How many of you are still cooking in the horse and buggy era? Well, I'm going to show you a better way. The electric way that gives your family better living at less cost 
and you a new freedom. For our demonstration, we have taken the best known and finest of all electric ranges. Naturally, your first question is, how much does it cost? I'll answer quite frankly that electric cooking of the finest kind costs very little more to buy and actually less to operate than the old-fashioned, uncertain, often hazardous flame cooking of the past. No matter whether you live in a mansion or a cottage, on a basis of dollars and common sense, you can't afford not to take advantage of this modern cooking method. So that's that. Now, what will it do for you? We all know that good cooking demands measured ingredients, measured heat, measured time. Any good cookbook can give you accurate measurement of ingredients. All the rest is provided accurately and automatically by this electric range with five precisely accurate ranges of heat and the time clock control which starts and finishes the cooking. Thus, cooking becomes an exact science. Even this year's bride can become a good cook in practically no time at all. And for experienced cooks, there's nothing new to learn except a new ease and simplicity of operation and a new improvement in results. Electric cooking is almost as simple as wishing. You can use all your favorite recipes and your favorite utensils too. Both will be better with this electric range. And now a word to you women who are struggling along with flame cooking. Do you realize that it is waste heat, waste money that turns your kitchen into a Turkish bath? Do you know that the flames and fumes of old-fashioned cooking devitalize the air as much as if 14 people were crowded into your kitchen? No wonder you're fagged out at the end of the day. And flame cooking is bound to produce soot and dirt. Dirt that you pay to create and pay again to remove from the stove, the kitchen, yes, and even from your face, hair, and clothing. But electric heat is clean heat, so our modern woman is free of all that. Free for bridge, shopping, free to catch up on her mending, gardening, or any of the other 101 household duties that demand her time. Does that sound too good to be true? Let's prove it. Long before this program started, we laid out a complete dinner on this range. Set the timer to start and finish cooking, and let the range do the rest. You can see for yourselves the complete absence of soot or smoke or grime. And incidentally, this cellophane is not fireproof. When touched with flame, it burns like tinder. But during all this period of cooking, everything has been perfectly safe because in electric cooking, there is no flame. And despite the fact that no one has paid the slightest bit of attention to this range during the cooking period, dinner is ready. Won't you join us? Why hasn't somebody told people about these things? What a program. And you're terrific. And look, maybe there's an idea for you, Terry. And just three months too late. Are you awfully sure it's too late? You know, this was really designed for the woman who does her own work. Seems to me it's just fitted to you in many ways. I'm afraid you don't understand. Oh, maybe I do. Won't you let me help you for a little while? Sure, why not? What can you lose?
It works, Jeff. You've got it. Except for one thing, it lands a little too hot. All right, Jack. We'll go into that later. Much. 80 cents, lady. Terry. Jeff. Jeff, darling, it's been so long. For weeks and weeks, I've had a beautiful speech all memorized. All the right things to say. You want to hear it? No. Don't say anything. Let's just walk. I should get mercenary at a time like this. I suppose if we didn't love each other, we couldn't hurt each other. That's all over. Let's forget it. Jeff, listen. This time we're starting out right. I want you to bring your mother and father and granny to our house for dinner. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, now, wait a minute. That's way too much work. And besides, this calls for bright lights, gay laughter, and soft music and champagne. Jeff. And it's going to be my way or it isn't going to be. We've all been living in separate worlds and it's time we got together. But can't we? I, I, I mean, isn't there some way? I, I mean, why lead with our chins? Do you want to back out on it? Well, uh, 10 years from now, I hope this is funny. Just came over to help you out. Didn't cook for ranch hands five years for nothing. Ah, oh, bless you, Granny. I was just leaving. I have a radio rehearsal this afternoon. Young lady, at 7 o'clock this evening, you've got to put on the biggest blowout since the Feast of Babylon. Of course. But I've got to go to the studio now. Everything's all right, and I know what I'm doing. You better. If you mess this up, I swear I'll paddle you with my bare hands. <laughs> Don't worry. You just trust me. <laughs>
she's here all right. Of course she is. Hello, everybody. Hello, Terry. So sorry I kept you waiting. Jeff, you make everybody at home. Away from me, you flea bread. Hello, Julian. This is Jeff Wadsworth. I want the best table you can give me tonight for a party of five. Yes, tonight, right away. And go the limit on. Oh, Julian, cancel that. Don't pay any attention to me. Yeah, no, I'm just crazy. Darling, I don't understand. There's so much you don't understand. Get me the ice cubes. I was afraid of that. Here, you carry it in, Dolly. A secret, darling. I'm an awful fool. Yes, dear, but that's all right. Hurry up! Hurry up! You've got 50 years ahead of you for that sort of nonsense, and I'm hungry. Maybe you better carve, son. Looks to me as if that's going to go on for a long, long time. <laughs> 